PCBWay is one of the leading PCB manufacturers out there and it is the manufacturer I use for my products. Now if you're either a hobbyist and or looking to create a final product, PCBWay is going to be a really great choice with their 24 hour and also assembly services. So go ahead and check the links down below. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at two new products from Runcam. We have the SpeedyB Adapter 2, which works off of Wi-Fi, which we're going to get into a little bit here. And we're also going to be taking a look at the Runcam Split 4, not quality, just latency and accessories. However, the Runcam Split 3 is by far one of my favorite, favorite split cameras to this day to, due to its quality. So I have high hopes for this one, and I'm sure it's not going to be a letdown. So let's first start off with the SpeedyB Adapter 2 here. Now this is based off of Wi-Fi. So once you power this guy on, you do get a wireless connection. You would connect to it and you'll no longer have internet connection on your phone, which is going to play a big role later on. And you do have two ports here. Now 2FC here, as far as I believe, this is not outputting any power to your flight controller. And the bottom one is the one that will allow uh, power to go to your flight controller. So I'm guessing this is the safe route if you had a battery also connected into your quadcopter when you are doing your connection and the bottom one here if you have nothing connected for example just grabbing a flight controller like this then you're going to want to go to the other port where it doesn't say 2fc so let's quickly actually try this out here now we're going to plug it in obviously we're not going to get any power so for input voltage we could put an xc60 1 to 6s and for and you also have a connector for a 1s input right here from your little micros uh which is very useful at times depending on what you're going to be setting up here so for this video we're going to be putting just a 4s battery and as you can tell once i plug it in we do have power now if i were to install it on the two the fc section which is this section right here we don't get any power so don't get scared that it's not working that's what happened to me in the beginning so yeah just keep that in mind so if you have the battery connected to your quadcopter then you would put it to fc if nothing is connected then you want to use the bottom one here which gives also power like we see here now red means nothing is connected on this so let's go ahead and actually connect via the phone here so now we're going to go ahead and connect to the uh, adapter here so it's going to load up all the wi-fi connections and we're going to put the sp adapter which is the speedy adapter and you should see this turn green and that means you're connected so we can go ahead and go back here and now we're basically connected and we can do anything we want into beta flight. You can see the flight controller moving and everything is wireless currently. Now what's also really nice about this is if we disconnect, we also have more options here. FC firmware flasher. However, before you flash to the latest firmware, you need internet. And what you would need to do is obviously, first of all, you're going to need to disconnect off the Wi-Fi. Then we're going to go ahead and uh, load the firmware online. So now you have internet to actually get this stuff. So we're going to go ahead and use that one. We are going to download the firmware and then we're going to have to reconnect to the Wi-Fi. As you can tell, we are not connected anymore here. So let's go ahead and uh, connect. So we're just going to turn on the Wi-Fi here. So as you can tell, it is connecting right now and we are connected. So let's go ahead and say I have connected the battery, confirm connection and detecting FC. And now we should see it flashing, initializing, erasing flash memory. There we go. And now the firmware is flashing. This might take some time. So this is one thing you need to take into consideration when you're planning on flashing a firmware through this is to disconnect, download the firmware, then reconnect, and then continue on with the steps. And I really like how they made it super easy and super simple to do. And uh, they've already thought of that uh, issue arising somewhere. So I'm just going to let this, uh, I'm actually just going to disconnect it. It's okay. We could just DFU this later on. So other than firmware flasher, we also have camera firmware update, which just basically allows you to update your run cam hybrid and the Razer 3 if you needed to do that. There's different firmwares here, which you can go ahead and play around with. The BL, the, the ESC configurator is only BL Heli S and BL Heli if anybody's still using BL Heli because BL Heli 32 software is closed source. So you're only going to be able to modify BL Heli S ESCs. Keep that in mind. I think there's a separate configurator for BL Heli for BL Heli 32, but I don't really remember. I haven't played around with that. Help Center, one touch configuration looks pretty interesting here. I don't know what this stuff is. You could actually do some stuff here, but I don't know what kind of configuration this is for. Uh, oh, we have Tyro 99, Eoshin Wizard. Oh, wow. I'm guessing these are backup files here. 
Whoa, that's crazy. So the Ishin Wizard, the Ishin uh, Wizard X22S, and um, yeah, and these I think these probably Ditones maybe. I don't know, but that's crazy. So you do have something here for one touch configurations, which I like seeing actually. And here we have some of our settings here. Nothing too special. Just uh, just you could update your Bluetooth module, which is the previous one, and you could also update the Wi-Fi module here. And to update to the latest firmware, I haven't, I didn't need to. Everything just worked great out of the box. And again, just take into consideration the 2FC part means you have a battery connected or there's an external power source to the flight controller. And if you don't have an external power source, then you're going to want to use the uh, other one down here. And um, well, that's really it for this one. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the Runcam Split 4. Now this thing takes 5 to 20 volt input. It records at 4K 30 frames per second and 2.7K at 60 frames and 1080p 60 frames per second. Now, if it's as good as the Runcam Split 3, then this thing is gonna be an absolute beast. Now we're gonna test the latency where it kind of falls short. However, before that, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the things that you do provide you in the packaging. So some of the things they do provide you in the packaging is they give you an adapter to change it from a micro to a mini, also an extra connector, and just some screws and standoffs if you needed to. Now the mounting hole is 20 by 20 and it is using M2 holes. So these are two millimeter holes here. So if you're ever curious, the length of the wire is pretty short and let's actually get a proper measurement here. So the length of the wire is six centimeters. So it's around 60 millimeters. However, when you try to go the other way, you're not gonna get that full 60 uh, millimeters here. You probably get around five centimeters or 50 millimeters here of uh, clearance. So yeah, keep that in mind. I really hope they uh, ship them with a little bit longer cables. Since now we have double stack frames where we can actually put two kind of stacks. Usually people would like to put that all the way in the back somewhere. And uh, to have that extra length is always really nice. So let's go ahead and jump into the latency. So I think this is uh, the fastest 4K uh, latency cam. I think I'm not sure actually, because the Cadix Loris or Chloris or whatever it was that we tested was around 38 to 47 milliseconds. This one here is 33 to 40 milliseconds of latency, which is, um, I mean, 33 and below would have been sort of acceptable. But yeah, don't look at this if you're going to be going into racing, maybe just casual freestyle where you really need a uh, nice footage. This is where you'd actually go and grab it. And this is the case with most of these cameras that are split. They tend to have a lot of latency here. The latency is pretty consistent between 33 and 40 milliseconds. Um, so that's kind of good. But again, when you turn off the LEDs, then those kind of go up slightly to around 50 milliseconds or so. But then that's, you know, you have your wide dynamic range kicking in and the brightness. So uh, you could take that as you please. But I think the LED turning on is more realistic than the LED turning off um, due to it trying to keep as much light in as possible. But the image has changed somewhat. So that's up to you to choose uh, which latency you take. And again, everything is linked down below. Come join my Patreons. I do a ton of giveaways and you get access to a lot of crazy cool stuff. And well, that's it guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.